Welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening Program. I am Jerry Horner, and today joining me is Fran Zimmerman. She's a fellow plant lover, and she used to be in the Garden Club, farmer member. And today we're going to be talking about rhododendrons and azaleas. And you can see they're just gorgeous right now this year. They're just a, a beautiful sight right now. We've had just the right and, weather for them, yes, I guess. Yes, we have. And uh, we'll also be talking about uh, how we can put them in your garden and put a wow factor in your garden. And we're talking about upcoming events and what you need to do in your garden in May. Now, May is going to be a busy month in the garden. Mm -hmm. So the upcoming event, the uh, Garden Club Spring Plant Sale, will be Saturday, May 4th, which is coming up right away. And uh, it's at uh, Village Wastewater Company on Highway 71 uh, from 8 to 1. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're watching the program after May 4th, then um, you can still might be buy some of the plants mm -hmm. that are left because mm -hmm. they put them in the, um, the sand beds there at, at Wastewater. And they'll sell them at Wastewater from um, Monday through Friday from 9 to 3. So you still have an opportunity mm -hmm. to buy some plants if there's mm -hmm. any left. Sometimes there's not much left, but mm -hmm. that's good. But just check at the office and, and they'll let you know where they are. Uh, rhododendrons and azaleas are just so popular. And it's, um, it's strange because their botanical name classifications change, you know, and, and I don't really talk a lot about the botanical names because sometimes my tongue gets twisted around with those names. Yes. <laughs> They're hard to pronounce. But the tags are different, Jerry. Oh, yeah, you have to save your tags. The tags are different now, too. And see, the, um, it used to be the azaleas were separate but now they're in the rhododendron family. So all rhododendrons are not azaleas, but all azaleas are rhododendrons. Right. So in the rhododendron family. And, uh, you know, on the tag, it'll say rhododendron azalea. Right. But it's really an azalea. And there's a difference. So, um, so what is the difference? Well, the difference, um, if you had a microscope, you could tell. But yeah. usually the... Um, the leaves are longer. And it's a leggier plant, and it, too. The well, rhododendron. It's a, it's a taller plant. Taller. Yeah. The, the stems the are, are bigger. bigger. And the blooms are huge. The big pom-pom mm -hmm. blooms. So it's a bigger bloom. And um, it's just a, a little different, larger plant. Mm -hmm. and, um, but there's just so many varieties. You know, there's 10,000 types and 8,000 species, so you have such a variety of plants and colors and, and growth habits, you know, short and long and tall and leggy and whatever, so. Well, Jerry, I was really actually glad you asked me to come here today because, as it happened, I had an azalea plant that I planted last spring. Mm -hmm. My husband and I planted early in the spring, and it didn't make it through the winter, mm -hmm. and so I returned it to the nursery, uh, local nursery, mm -hmm. um, where I got it, and they made an exchange for me. And that's that's one thing nice about working with a good local nursery. Right. When you buy your plants, you should check their return policy and their guarantees. Right. Yeah. And so I brought it with me today. Okay. It's right here in the yeah. studio. And um, when I picked it out, uh, they suggested that I... And well, you know, I wanted to get the right one of the, you know, the best one. Of course, you always do when you're and the one. right color and the right color. Right. And it is a red, reddish pink color. Okay. But the the plant itself, of course, now isn't blooming because um, that makes it a better choice for me. The ones that were blooming will, well, then they'll lose their flowers by the time it's settled it's fully in. settled in. And it's really better to transplant a a plant when it's not blooming, right? either before it blooms or after. It's, so. it's better for the shock and the roots, yeah. roots can take it better. Now this one's called Red Magnificence. Yes. And it's a rebloom. Right, so it'll bloom twice. Okay, so you know we have Encore azaleas that bloom periodically through the year, but this is a new variety that I, I'm not really familiar with. I guess with. it's a different company right. or something. They have developed these rebloom azaleas. Right. So. I think these are new on the market, so I really do, because I haven't seen them before. So the so. next thing to do is to plant it, and I was really mm -hmm. interested in all the things that you need to do to ensure success, because I didn't yeah. want to have another failure this time. So Well, all the rhododendrons are going to be happy as clam with the right placement, so you have to have a few basic conditions, you know, mm -hmm. that, uh, and if they aren't met, 
they're not going to be as happy and may have like yellow leaves or, you know. They die. Lack of bloom <laughs> or die <laughs> or die. But um, too much sun, uh, they're, they're going to shrivel up and suffer. But if you have too little light, they're not going to bloom as well. Um, so they really prefer like dappled sunlight through the trees. Um, or, you know, like maybe morning sun, and right. afternoon shade. This particular <coughs> location will be east. And dappled. It, so, yeah, yeah, and dappled. So it'll yeah. get that east morning sun, but none of the heat in that'll the be, afternoon. That'll be perfect. So that'll be good. Yeah. And then uh, you have to have the right soil, too. Um, and they really need to be well drained. They do not like their feet wet. <coughs> they need to have good drainage. And here we have, like a, around many of our homes here in Bella Vista, we have good old clay and rock fill dirt, mm -hmm. which is really heavy. And so what should you do with. then? Well, um, then you want to add a lot of compost and, and plant them a little higher. Don't plant that, that, root, um, that root ball right at, at soil level. Just raise it up a little bit so they have a little more drainage. Okay. And they want a soil that's like 4.5 4 to 5.5. PH. So in the so end, you'll have acid. your plant up on a mound that Well, you've made. it'll just be mounded up a little. You don't okay. have to raise it up, you know, this high. Just, you know, a few inches up so it has some good drainage and it doesn't yeah. sit in a puddle of water. And the, the soil that you planted it in is um, has compost, so it, it, it'll drain down. And I had, there was a master gardener called Walter Glore, and he had gorgeous rhododendrons. He would dig a shallow hole He'd fill it with pine bark mulch, and he would plant his azaleas raised up in pine bark mulch and no soil, and they were gorgeous. Now, I haven't tried that, so mm -hmm. I'm not sure. He, he may have just an extra green thumb. But well, they have they shallow beautiful. roots, so they're going they to go do. out this way, so yeah, maybe it will reach the soil. Yeah. I know I um, to water it one inch per do week like or to use a so and to use a soaker, soaker hose. I thought I'd better. try that. I'm much better than to have it on the foliage is to just use the soaker hose. Mm -hmm. and when you have the water in the foliage, it kind of produces problems with mold and yeah. mildew and stuff. And one thing that, that, Jerry, you and I have talked about is the Masters Golf Tournament and at Augusta oh, yeah. National Golf Club where they have these gorgeous mm -hmm. azaleas and all that pine needles, yes. the pine needles, pine straw is what it's called yeah. in the south. Um, for mulch, mm -hmm. and that it adds acid to the soil, right. um, and that's a mulch or pine, pine bark mulch or uh, and pine needles are wonderful. And pine needles would be great. And I thought then, I'd use some of those. Yeah, and when you do mulch them, you want to leave an inch or so, inch or two around the the base, you know, the crown, um, so that the mulch isn't right up to the plant, because okay. that would encourage the moisture to sit there. Insects will, you know, attack it more easily. Okay. So just leave that that mulch just an inch or two right for, away from that that base. So, and then um, you want to fertilize them after they bloom. Mm -hmm. So they set their blooms in the summer, you know, late summer, mm -hmm. and early fall for the spring bloom. So um, by the time they're ready to bloom, they've been you know, mm -hmm. fertilized, and fertilizer mm -hmm. won't help then, <clears throat> but fertilize them after they bloom, so that'll get them started for their next setting of, of buds. And isn't an organic, uh, acidic um, fertilizer the best? It's the best, yeah. Yeah. If you, if you fertilize with a um, synthetic, mm -hmm. it's like giving them a shot of cocaine. Oh. <laughs> and they go up, and then they go down. Okay. So your, your natural fertilizers are more, you know, even and it's a, a natural, you know, fertilization rather than Good. just a jolt of something. You know, Good. they're not going to get another jolt of for a while. So, um, your your organic fertilizers are much better. Good. And um, then you add water and mulch. And then pruning. You really don't want to prune azaleas and rhododendrons unless you have to. They will take some severe pruning. You know, if they're just way too tall. And maybe you've chosen the wrong plant for that spot, but you can prune them like a third. But off. what about pruning off the, the spent blooms? Sometimes I'll just you know pick them off, but it's they're not really. If you deadhead, they're not okay. going to rebloom. So you don't have to. And do the that. encores, I don't think um, if you if you deadhead, it's going to encourage um, reblooming mm. any more than you know waiting until they rebloom. Mm -hmm. So 
It's not a plant you really have to deadhead. Great. Unless you just don't like the great, look. Great, great. Um, yeah. I've... Or you can take a rake across it, and, you know. Deadheading dead. is tedious. Let's, let's just is. move, it, move yes, on. Yes, yes. And um, we do have some pictures of some rhododendrons in Philadelphia oh, and, and okay. azaleas. So um, I've gotten some of the rhododendrons. Oh, um, that's a pretty one. Now this is the Roseum elegans. This is the more common uh, rhododendron you see, you know, mm -hmm. the old fashioned. And I think a lot of them have been hybridized from this rhododendron. And you just see it everywhere, the old farms and, you know, old mm -hmm. homesteads. So this is a real, real popular one. And it's easy to grow. It, it's not finicky. And as long as you've followed all the, the rules, you know, it, it likes it. Now, this one's called Blue Danube. And it has a little more open flower. It's not as a big cluster. Mm -hmm. And um, it's beautiful. There's so many rhododendrons uh, and azaleas available, and you just have to either know the color before you buy, mm -hmm. or if you see it in bloom, buy it and then bloom it after it fades. Mm -hmm. So, but if you really want the, an exact color, it's best to see it in bloom and plant it later. Then this one is called um, <clears throat> David Winship, and it's white. And it's just a, it's, they all have these little speckles on their leaves mm -hmm. that make them so interesting. Mm -hmm. you know, they're not just a, a solid mm -hmm. leaf usually. I see rhododendrons, especially if I'm driving. I know there are other places in Bella Vista you mm -hmm. can see them, but on Chelsea, yeah. it's one of the little older areas. Mm -hmm. There's some beautiful rhododendrons yeah. in some of the houses. They make houses great foundation there. plants. Mm -hmm. You know, they really do. And this one is called Henry's Red. Now, the one you bought is um, is going to be in the red family too. Yeah, it's a red magnificence. Red magnificence, and like I said, you want to keep your tags whenever you buy a plant. Keep your tags so you know what you have, and um, you know you can kind of keep track of what's what you have. And mm -hmm. um, it's, it's best to keep those. And this next one isn't that pretty. That's called pomegranate splash. It's gorgeous. See, these new hybridizers are coming up with all these variations of plants, you know, and they're just coming up with stripes and oh, that's spots lovely. and ruffles. And, I mean, they just come up with all these different attributes to the plant, but they're beautiful. And then this one is called uh, Blue Ridge Kitties. And it has a pom-pom look, but it seems yes. like the flowers are a little bigger. The individual flowers are uh -huh. a little larger. It almost so. had a hydrangea look to it. Mm -hmm. It did, it did. And it's, um, it's, it's just every, every rhododendron, every azalea is just a little different. So you have so much variety. And here and, you got a short one. And now this one is a dwarf. This is uh, Morheim. And it's, um, it's in the blue family. It's so pretty. It's only two feet tall. Two, it goes two foot by two foot, basically. So well, it's, it, it's a there real are, good. Places low plant. where you don't want a large right, plant. Right, right. Because you could layer these and put mm -hmm. this below a larger plant. Right. And you have layers. Okay. Then this next one is, this is a uh, native um, azalea, rhododendron. It's a native rhododendron. There are only about uh, 18 species in North America that are native. And 15 of those are on the East Coast. Right, East, I was eastern states. Reading that, particularly so. in, in the Appalachian Mountains, mm -hmm. you will yeah, see. Yeah, they that. are, and they're they're deciduous. They're not uh, evergreen, mm -hmm. um, and they're a little taller, a little leggier. They're not as compact, mm -hmm. but the blooms are just so you know pretty, mm -hmm. and they're just wispy. But the, it's it's a beautiful the, um, the natives. You wouldn't want to put that in your front yard, maybe, but. You know, because it does get a little leggy, but you know, in a, in a back but in the garden. backyard against some green, mm -hmm. it would be yeah, beautiful. really show up well. Then this one is an azalea. Now we're moving to the azaleas. So this is called Karen, and um, it's a it's a fairly popular azalea. You'll see that pretty much. Um, and then this azalea is called Red Ruffles. Uh, so there's some reds, yellows, That's, um, yeah, a color you know, you pinks, see purples, lavenders, just so many different shades of, of pink and, and um, they're just yeah, I don't coral, care. you know, there's all kinds of colors. 
Then this one is called, it's a Gerard's uh, Pleasant White. Now you will see some Gerard um, series of azaleas. Oh. And um, they're a little more hardy, I think, in our area, the Gerard's. Oh, okay. um, and this is the white one, and it's just pure white. It's really pretty. And then this one is called Fashion. And it's a semi-dwarf, and I have this one in my back. Uh, this isn't my azalea, but I have this in my on my back uh, deck. Is that sort of a, a coral? Deck. It's kind of a coral, um, kind of a pinky coral. Mm -hmm. You know, and it it's, it blooms I mean, wonderfully. See, in this particular photo, it looks like there's pine straw there. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's where you see it. And then um, I had a baby that grew next to the one of the plants I had, so I moved it over a little bit, and it blooms two weeks after mama. So all my azaleas will bloom, and then I have this one bloom, one on the end, and two weeks later it blooms every year. It, it waits two more weeks, so I have an extended bloom period on that. <laughs> I don't know why it does that. <laughs> Ooh, so, that's a beautiful one. And this is... Um, uh, sunburst, I think. This is called an encore. This is called sunburst, so we're in the encore. Azalea. So okay. this encore azaleas, they came out a few years ago. They will take a little more sun than mm -hmm. the normal, um, than the old-fashioned azaleas. So they will take a little more sun. And they'll bloom, a uh, blush of blooms in the spring. And then they'll have periodic blooms and maybe a little flush in the fall. Mm -hmm. but they, you know, they just bloom off and on all year. That's mm. why they call them encore. And I don't have any of those, but they're just, there's another encore. And uh, Ooh, it's a lilac pretty? color. Yeah, and the leaves are so pretty. That deep green with the lilac is just beautiful. Um, so it's called autumn lilac. And I guess because of the autumn, it's going to bloom again in the autumn. So that's why they called it autumn. And then this one's called autumn twist. So it has a little variation of that color on you know, the inside. and the. Oh, that's, that you know, is really interesting. Isn't it? It would be nice to have those together. Actually. Right, and they just, you know, it just had a pop of color to your garden. It mm -hmm. really would pop. You'd, you'd walk by that and you'd, you know, you'd be... Oh, uh, just brighten your day. Yeah, it, it catches <laughs> your attention. It does. And then now we have, um, this is a variegated azalea. It's the... Oh, uh, the leaves are variegated. Yeah, the variegated. Look at that, almost like a, mm -hmm. like a hosta. And it blooms like a hot pink color almost, a bright lavender, or a bright... And then this one is called rosebud azalea. And this, when they come out, they just look like little rosebuds, the hmm. blooms do. And it's a hmm. beautiful azalea. They're a little harder to find, but you can find them at the nurseries. Sometimes you can order them through the nurseries. They'll mm. order them for you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure who the propagator was, but they've been around for quite a while. Hmm. I've had mine for at least 20 years. So, and they're long-lived. And then this is a gumpo azalea. That's another group that's, um, it's smaller, it's a dwarf, and it kind of, it's a great for a border, you know, in your azalea bed. And it blooms later. It does bloom a mm -hmm. little later than the rest, so it does extend your bloom time. And then what I have done, this is actually my garden. I don't really show pictures of my garden very much, but this you'll see in the background, I have azalea, I have a rhododendrons. In the back is the rhododendrons. In the middle is the uh, variegated azalea. The one that's just, just a little right, pocket right, there. Like in the, yeah, a little pocket in the middle. That's the variegated. Then a, they're surrounded by the rosebud, the pink rosebuds. Uh -huh. And then at the bottom of the picture, you'll see the gumpos. They're on the bottom, and they'll bloom white. And I think you might see, oh, I don't know, there's one or two blooms of white that's starting. So you have... A, a length of time where there's a beautiful, beautiful blooms there. You can do that with your um, with your azaleas and rhododendrons. You can layer them and make them companion plantings, mm -hmm. and you can make quite a quite a statement with yeah. your rhododendrons and azaleas because they all want the same um, elements, you know, okay. the light and the water. So they're good oh, companion really plants. So. By the way, I'm going to um, uh, put some ferns next to mine mm -hmm. because they're also acid loving. Oh yeah, anything that likes acid and shade would be great companion plants. Mm -hmm. So, um, But that's, you know, 
rhododendrons and azaleas have been here a long time, and they'll be here a long time to come. Right, so. when you're talking about them still in old uh, farmsteads, you know, oh, you yeah. know that they've been here for a long time. You yeah. know, now they've been sixty been or eighty years. They've all been imported from the you know the Middle East or whatever, except or, for know, the ones except that, for the natives. But yeah. um, they're they're pretty stable here. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. And then there's other things we have to do in the garden. Don't forget, this is a busy month. May is time to finish your planting. And don't forget to mulch everything you plant. So that's going to save you time and water and, and weed pulling. So Yes, yes. And May is and the there, time the to... the weeds are galore. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, to go out. And yes, it's hard to walk outside without plucking a weed. <laughs> yeah, you can't walk by a bed without taking a little but weed But this out. is a great time to pick up some annuals, oh, too, yeah. and um, use those in your yard. Oh, you can put them in, con in containers. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing that's really helpful in containers, so that you don't have to be watering them every day, is to use these little polymer beads. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to put too many. Just no. follow the directions. It says one teaspoon, one teaspoon. Yeah, right. Because Otherwise you'll have like jello on the top of your plants. Right. It really absorbs the water. Right. But it's it's just can save your, your yeah, plants. It does. And there's so many new varieties of annuals all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm always seeing new things. So try new things. Yeah. Herbs are, are something that um, they that like to nighttime temperature at 50 degrees. And we're pretty steady right now. May is a pretty good month to be 50 degrees at night. And uh, we've had some Mays where, you know, the first couple of weeks it got in the 40s. But this year so far it's been pretty good. So you can get your basil out. The basil just will sit there and do nothing if it's under 50. And um, so get your, your herbs planted. And most herbs need full sun. And they'll, they'll tolerate some afternoon shade. Jerry, I just bought some rosemary. Mm -hmm. because, um, some of these herbs will have not only be useful in cooking, mm -hmm. but they are also useful in repelling certain insects they or deer. They are. They are. And I have an oak leaf hydrangea. A deer huh, like to eat hydrangeas. Mm -hmm. And uh, this oak leaf hydrangea is far away from my house, so it's very attractive to the deer. Mm -hmm. It's not at all close to our house, and we're in the middle of the woods. So I'm going to put rosemary on either mm -hmm. side. The scent of the rosemary just puts them off. They don't like anything with a lot of scent, like marigolds and rosemary. Right. Anything with a heavy scent, they just don't like. So, Except for roses. They do like roses. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's one exception. But um, Oh, and bulbs. Um, probably, I'm sure by oh. now, most of your, your bulbs have been up and spent. Mm -hmm. And if you leave the leaves uh, to um, just wilt and then, then remove them after right. they're, they're, they're yeah, brown. Yeah, you can remove the, the bud. Yes. You know, the remainder exactly. of the flower. Right, so it looks a little nicer. Leaves. That's what feeds that bulb for next year. If you take the leaves off, there's no fertilization to make another bloom. So they won't bloom again. They'll just sit there. They'll maybe throw out some leaves. Right. But they're not going to give you a bloom. So you have to leave that green on there. Green now leaves. that's, of course, the fall bulbs. But mm -hmm. the, the spring bulbs um, are perfect to put in in mid-May. Oh, yeah. Yes. They're the caladiums, the canna. Mm -hmm. um, and the spider, oh, the spider yes. bulbs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're, they're wonderful in the fall. Elephant ears. Yeah. They're, they're a good uh, addition to your garden, those bulbs. Because they'll come back every year. Mm -hmm. So easy. So perennials, be sure to finish, you know, dividing and um, mulch as you go. And then if you want to try to remember their names, you want to keep those labels from the garden and put a label out there so you can remember what plant it is, and what, what, you know, variety it is in case someone asks you. Mm -hmm. um, you'll have, um, you'll know what they are. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember sometimes. It's not on the tip of my tongue, but I got my label there. I'll know exactly mm -hmm. what it is. So. One thing that I was reminded of when I was watching one of the uh, uh, gardening shows on uh, public television um, was to add more compost when you're when you're doing that dividing. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. put in a, more compost Absolutely. around the whole that whole area. Right, that just feeds that perennial, and mm -hmm. they just love that. Okay, and then we have lawns. Well, this is... That are slow coming up this year. Uh, they're a little slow, mm -hmm. but they will probably start growing just like a teenager, <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but be sure you mow no more than one-third of the height of the leaf blade. Now, um, if you have Bermuda, 
grass, apply a second pre-emergent uh, crabgrass uh, control treatment between May 15th and June 15th. Mm -hmm. That's really it's a good. good. Time for that. Now, if you have a fescue, uh, fertilize with nitrogen only uh, if your soil test indicates it is needed. Yeah, that's a good time to get a soil test on your on your lawn too. If you're having a problem and it's you know looking sparse or having any kind of problem, just get a soil test. They're free at the extension office, so that's always good to do for any of your beds. Oh, yeah. Now you have roses. I don't. I, I have a few. I have downsized my rose bed. Uh, I've gotten tired of spraying and uh, yes. you know, maintaining the black spot and watch. So I have I have downsized. But um, if you get the aphids, you can just hose them off with a with a, a spray hose, mm -hmm. pretty pretty strong spray. They'll drop on the ground, but they won't go back up. And if you do that for two or three days in a row, you shouldn't have more aphids. And um, you need to fertilize your roses um, probably every through two to three weeks. They are heavy feeders. And you want to water them first before you fertilize so that roots don't burn. Uh. And then water, you know, the fertilizer in real well. And um, you just want to water them deeply. They, they don't like to be just sprinkled on. And soaker hoses are much better than having water on their foliage. They don't like that unless mm -hmm. you do it early in the morning. <clears throat> and it has a chance to dry during the day. So just, um, you know, watering at the base is much better for roses. Mm -hmm. So... Well, trees and shrubs, um, you should prune your spring flowering shrubs after they bloom. Of course, this isn't quite true with these dahlias that we just talked about. You want to let them go. Let them. But uh, the, the, um, the other kinds of uh, spring flowering shrubs and trees, yeah. I'm waiting for my Rose of Sharon to come out, but I mm -hmm. think that might be the, more the end of May and into June. Well, you really, Rose of Sharon, you would trim in late winter. Okay. Yeah. Right, right. Because yeah, they're going to put out their blooms on new growth. So um, now, any of your azaleas or something, you'd want to prune it after they bloom, now, spring, before they start setting their new bloom. Hopefully you have uh, most of your, if you have new plantings of trees and shrubs mm -hmm. that they're done by this time and make sure they're well right. watered. They yeah. really need to yeah. be well watered um, Now you e see landscapers week. will plant trees and shrubs all year round. Mm -hmm. But you plant them when it starts getting warm. It, it's a it's a trick to get them right. to thrive. You know, it takes a lot of water, and they're right. not established before that drought hits. And I've seen some lovely azaleas around Bella Vista, mm -hmm. and uh, you should deadhead those uh, once they've bloomed. The azaleas? Uh, no, excuse me. Did no. I say azaleas? No, lilacs. No. Lilacs. Lilacs. Oh, yeah, lilacs. Yes. There's too many plants to right. read. <laughs> I was yeah. thinking lilacs, and we're doing azaleas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, the lilacs are yeah. just, just they were gorgeous. beautiful this year, too. It was just a beautiful spring. I don't think I've ever seen the dogwoods this gorgeous. In oh, years. no. They have just been everywhere in the woods, just full and white. Right. And just, and it was beautiful. And they lasted so long. They right. They lasted like two weeks, you know, and it's right. unusual. They're still right? going. And, well, they're I haven't. Just, they, they're just well, beautiful. This morning, but they were as of yesterday. Yeah, yeah. nature's a wonder here. Um, and then vegetables, it's time to do your vegetable gardens, and um, you can put your um, uh, plant bush and pole snap beans and lima beans and, and your cucumbers, eggplant, tomatoes, mm -hmm. whatever. So it's the time to do your vegetable garden, and um, it's, it's sometimes tricky in Bella Vista for vegetables, but, you know, if you're a good old farmer type <laughs> gardener, you can come up with a lot of good vegetables, so... Don't forget to fertilize and, and you know get that um, that mulch down. Keep the weeds down. Oh, so, okay. and then for more inf gardening information, you can go to the Master Gardener website. Um, it's BentonCountyGardening.org, and there's a lot of information there. And then for more information on the Bella Vista Garden Club, you can go to BellaVistaGardenClub.com and their website, and it's got great information in there. So. And our gardening uh, meetings are, are on hiatus now for the summer, and we'll start meeting again in August this year instead of September. So our first meeting will be in August. So oh, we'll, we'll tell them about that later. But Fran, thank you so much for oh, joining me today. I just always love your, your, your twist on plantings and, and plants. And, and I always learn something Well, new, that's the so. thing with gardening. You learn every day. Every day there's something else to learn. Yes. Yeah, it just keeps evolving. And, and um, 
We both love gardening so much, and we've both learned from our mistakes. Yes, we have. Yes. <laughs> Don't assume that we've done everything right. And hopefully my mistake I can tell you about, yes. you won't have to make it. Right. <laughs> so that's, that's good. So we love to share. We love to share information. So, and I hope you've enjoyed the show and that you will join us again next month. And until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. Thank <laughs> you.